What do you want to eat tonight? I don't know. What do you want to eat tonight? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Welcome back to my channel. We have a little chunk of bean here, but she will not be in this whole video. Um, I wanted to talk today about emotional strongholds and the one I want to talk about is indecisiveness. Indecisiveness. Because, guys, uh, I'm trying to break, I'm trying to break emotional strongholds and I have been, but I am still currently, you know, battling them and working through them and uh, on a growth journey as we all are. I feel like, hey babe, come here. All right, you wanna go for a walk? You wanna go for a walk? I think we need to go for a walk. I'll have to film later. Yeah, we need to get some energy out. Come on, let's go get your shoes. Let's go. Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll have to talk to you guys later. Girl. Y'all love that. <sighs> Hi. Hi guys. It is the next day. Yesterday was just not happening. And I tried to film at night and I was exhausted. I'm like, no, nah, not happening. So, um, hi. It's, before we get into it, I'm sorry. It's just so gorgeous out today. It's almost 60 degrees. And you may hear a lot of planes going by. There's like a million today. So, sorry. Anyway, let's jump into this. Where I left off was these emotional strongholds. Gotta go. Now, um, indecisiveness is, I think, to me, a very kind of almost lighthearted emotional problem, but it's actually not. It's not so light because it affects your mind and your mind affects your body and it can be crippling. And anything that you're, you know, that is controlling you or your mind or causing anxiety and keeping you in some sort of bondage is just not okay. You know, when you think about big decisions, yes, you have to wait on them a little bit. You might have to pray on it. You might have to just consider it and that's wise. But there's a difference between that and having a repetitive, constant battle with this. And so let's get rid of them. The root cause of indecisiveness is fear. Fear. Fear of being overstimulated, fear of making the wrong decisions, fear of displeasing someone, and fear of being rejected. And you may think, okay, well, me not knowing what to eat for dinner is not fear. Like, that's not fear. Well, it's probably disguised in anxiety. And it might be a small, a small amount of anxiety, but anxiety's root is fear. I think the importance in reeling all this in is that it's not a fog, it's not a subconscious thing, and we can now take control of it. And speaking of that, it helps us now with the future for our children, for the next generation. We know how to communicate. We know what to do and what not to do. The other thing is that now, as a Christian, if you're watching and you're a Christian, you're a believer, we know what to pray for. And that's going to upset Satan. No, because now we can grab hold of that and ask specifically what, what we need prayer for. I want to share a quote with you that I read a couple weeks ago in this devotional book. Let me grab it. You guys know, um, you guys know I'm in a women's group. My mom started and one of the ladies, Maya, actually did, she spoke once and she gave all of us this devotional, which is so, so nice of her. And it's really a great devotional. It's by Lisa Tukers. Lisa Tukers, I don't know how to say her name. Anyway, one of the devotions, her quote is this. Find that courageous yes. Fight for that confident no. And I, I, I had to write that down because it really st stuck with me. I feel like it's a lot more 
obvious to find a courageous yes because like if you're fearful or you don't like to make decisions and you know sometimes you just got to do it you got to go for it you got to say yes right so like that's more obvious but then the other one when it says fight for that confident no because I think for a lot of us when we make want to make a decision we think about all of the possibilities and it's too many possibilities and you don't want to make the wrong decision at least for me and coming going down to like a day thing like going out to my family is for the day do I want to do this today because I have x y and b to do I have a b c to do and the baby has a nap and if she naps and if she doesn't nap or what if she doesn't eat like just scenarios like I can drive myself crazy and it's so stupid like it's either make this decision or don't and live with either either decision but if we start to realize this and fight for a confident no if it's too much on our plate we just say i'm sorry but no and be confident in it don't waver in it i wrote some of these down yes i'm going to do this because i'm getting something accomplished Yes, I'm going to go because it's a good idea or this person needs me today. No, I'm not going to do this because I have too much on my plate. No, I can't make it because I'm not available emotionally or physically. <laughs> and that's why I feel like the no's are a little harder for some people because we feel bad, we don't want to upset someone. Um, I feel like for me, <sighs> I feel like I have boundaries and I won't let people cross certain boundaries and I know where my emotional health, like I, I have to say no, like I will say no. But at the same time, um, I do think the other, like the guilt weighs in or I feel bad or I'll give in or you know, like it, that plays into my mind. So that's anxiety. And we just have to start making yeses and nos be more being more assertive about it. Selfishness, you think about like, oh, then you don't want to be selfish. You want to serve others. You want to be a good friend or sister or brother or, or mother or whatever. But you have to do what's healthy for you, your mind, and your family, your well-being. There's obviously circumstances where you have to sacrifice. And that is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the toxic cycle of always being unsure. I think as of lately, I have definitely been more mindful of making decisions and sticking to them. Um, I still struggle with it. It's not, I'm not saying that I, I'm always like quick to say yes or no, but it's something that I'm intentionally working on and I notice a difference in me being intentional about it. And um, it's, it's interesting to like go through the process. And I think it's going to be even more cool to like now that I've, I'm making this video and I'm like holding myself accountable and um, have been doing the research and stuff like light research. It's making me more empowered I feel like to want to change that about myself. And so I hope that is the same for you guys. Hi, I'm in the middle of editing this and I was just thinking like I just want to be clear about this because I know that me talking about like the little decisions seems unimportant maybe. Anything that takes up your energy or wastes your time or causes some sort of anxiety, causes some small amount of stress, that adds up and it builds up. And if we can't be decisive or make decisions in the smallest things, how much more pressure and how hard, much harder is it going to be to make a decision with something big, you know? And also, we need to be confident women, assertive women, women who are empowered, women who are strong and bold and courageous and not allowing any sort of fear to control us. Pulling out the weeds, pulling out the smallest weed because over time, the weeds get crazy <laughs> they take up the entire lawn right or the flower bed whatever it is and that's what I'm just thinking about right now so back to the video
we have to be hyper intentional about every single decision we make. You're gonna come across so many decisions that you don't even realize. The bigger ones obviously take a little longer. Talk about it, pray about it, whatever it, ha you know, it takes. But the smaller ones and the day-to-day -day ones start to be more intentional. Make that yes, say no. A one way to help help you in that process, I feel like I help, help myself in the process, is to make options, to, to limit it down to options. What do you wanna to eat tonight? I don't know, what do you wanna to eat tonight? Whatever you want, whatever you want. Greek, pizza, or sushi. If you can't make a decision, limit it down and give the other person, you know, if you wanna give it to them, then they can decide. Or even break it down to two. And then the next thing is, when it comes to this topic, start to be more intentional about researching it. Now that you are aware of this, you have the upper hand because you can take it to God now. You can pray about this. And that's that should give you so much hope and clarity because you know like specifically, Lord, this is what I need work in and this specifically can you deliver me from? It, it will take away your stronghold. The, the enemy has no more power over you because you've released it. Your fear is you're gonna give away that, you give it again to God, you cast your carrying on. You're casting your cares upon him and it's no longer on your on your back on and burdening you. These planes are nuts. And so that's, and lastly, and this is, and so this is where I wanna bring it into our faith because I want to I want to talk about how, what God how God views this and also if we start to give this to God my camera died if we give this to God we are no longer a slave to fear or any bondage that we have on us and this is what God says the other thing that stood out that's the verse that stands out to me is let your yes be yes and your no be no. I love that verse because I feel like it highlights the importance of being a man and woman of our word, which also goes into being decisive. Matthew 5, 37. But let your yes be yes and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. I also like that. Oh, that's James 1.6. I really like this verse James, in James because being tossed like the waves of the sea, I, I never want to be that person that wavers in their faith. But I also feel like when it comes to um, lacking confidence in our decision making, and taking back our yes or our no's is it's we're wavering and that's also a lack of faith above all taking the shield of faith with which we will be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked one Ephesians 6 16 I feel that if we are being obedient to what God is calling us to do in our lives and we are trusting in the Lord and we're seeking him out then we need to have the confidence and the faith in, in the Lord that w with whatever choice that we do make, he's going to be beside us. You're gonna learn something from it. Some, he will bless you in a situation. Um, you'll become stronger. Or, you know, it just will go smoothly. Maybe it won't. Whatever happens, happens. Like, you can have peace. That's, that's what I wanna say. That's why I think it's, this is important because we can have victory in this. I will leave you with that. Be mindful this week of having your yes be yes and your no be no. When you commit to something to someone, stick, try your hardest to stick to it because that is also a reflection of who you are, your character, and a reflection of God. And if you say no, don't allow guilt or someone else to manipulate you into changing your mind because there's a reason why you said no. So... 
I think we will have all the more confidence once we actually start to walk on this and actually make those decisions and stick to them. And we'll see that we are more than capable of doing that. We're more than capable of not being in this like whirlwind cycle of bondage. And um, we also should have faith in, in the Lord that he's going to help us to grow and be more confident. And that's all I want to say. And I'm going to continue to work on different emotional uh, strongholds and things that I deal with. And we can uncover it together, hopefully, maybe. I'll make more videos. I don't know what to say. Love you guys. I'll see you in my next. Bye.